Hello and welcome to the Jesus Witch Podcast. I'm your host, Lena Elsia Lee, also known as Lena the Jesus Witch on TikTok and Instagram. The Jesus Witch Podcast is a show dedicated to opening the conversation about including Jesus in witchery practices. The goal of this podcast is to not be evangelical. The goal is to spread the love, light, truth, acceptance, and oneness that is Jesus Christ himself. Here at the Jesus Witch Podcast, we believe all people are loved by God and all people are loved by Jesus. We believe in community and the power of fellowship. We believe in giving whatever you reasonably can to help your neighbor who's in need. And above all, we believe in the power of creating a relationship with Jesus that is authentic and unique to you. Join me for new episodes of the Jesus Witch Podcast every single Monday and be sure to subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Jesus Witch Podcast. I'm your host, Lena Elsia Lee, also known as Lena the Jesus Witch on TikTok and on Instagram. This week we are going to be doing a newer type of episode of the Jesus Witch Podcast. I wanted to just start talking about individual herbs and like give a little spotlight on them, how you can work with them mundanely and magically. Um, So today we're going to be talking about one of the most versatile herbs, in my opinion, um, called lavender. So this is our first herbal spotlight on the lovely lavender but before we hop into this episode let's just talk about a few different ways you could help support the jesus witch podcast and keep this show going so the easiest way you could help support the jesus witch podcast is to give us a five star rating on whatever podcast platform you're currently listening to us on and be sure to subscribe to us on that platform as well and if you have a witchy or spiritual friend who you think might like this show please recommend it to them send them the spotify link or whatever link (laughs) you listen to us on um kind of thing and share the love of the Jesus Witch Podcast. If you would like to help support the podcast on a monthly basis, we have a Patreon with five different tiers that has all different types of perks, ranging from monthly community oracle readings to spell casting circles with me, where I send you a little, like, happy mail package every single month, which is, like, basically a mini like christian mystery box and then we get on zoom and we all cast the spell together and it's so much fun i also have a tier where i do one-on-one sessions with you to just talk about your practice talk about your spirituality um, and what direction you want to take in your witchery i also have an etsy shop where you can grab tarot readings with me i do tarot readings where i talk to jesus and i channel a message from him for you i do oracle readings astrology readings astrology readings are some of my absolute favorite things to do because they're so in-depth and people are always like I, at this point in my life I truly believe astrology is more of a science than a spiritual practice because I have personally never met somebody who doesn't resonate at least 80 percent with their birth chart um so I love doing astrology readings because when you see like people's faces as you're reading them they're like what the heck this is great it's just like the coolest thing in the entire planet um I also do like soul contract readings looking at the energy between yourself and like another person or a deity and what you're meant to learn from this relationship um and I also have bible-based spell oils um I have like a protection one one to connect with the divine feminine one to help you be more joyful a liquid gold like bringing an abundance kind of spell um and all of those things can be found on my etsy shop and then a few other quick ways you could help support the jesus witch podcast i have a place that you could just send a donation to i have a paypal and a cash app if you would like to do that i have a amazon baby registry because i'm currently pregnant with my third baby and i got rid of everything that i had (laughs) baby wise between my um second baby and this one so like anything helps you could follow me on Instagram or on TikTok, Lena the Jesus, which is my handle on both of those platforms. I don't really have any other like secondary social media. I did make like a backup TikTok account. I was posting on that for a couple of months, but I'm like, I want to just put all my energy into Lena the Jesus Witch. So um, yeah, like that's the only social media you'll find me on if you see any other account or if anybody tries to message you on anybody else besides Lena the Jesus Witch. And like, by the way, I don't do DMs. Um, If you have a message for me or something, put it in Discord. I don't do DMs for this reason because like too many people get scammed through DMs and your girl doesn't want you to be a part of that. So if somebody claiming to be me is messaging you, just know it ain't me because 
I don't do that. <laughs> and then finally, we have the Jesus Witch Church, which is a free Discord group. I do circles in there sometimes. We have like a whole community. We chat all day. It's a really, really fun place to be. So if you need community and you need other people who relate to like, you know, Christian witchery or Jesus witchery or like just discovering your spiritual path, you don't even have to work with Jesus or the Abrahamic pantheon to be in there. Um, just come hang out with us. We will be your community. We'll be your space. Now that we've talked about all that good stuff, let's jump into this week's episode and do an herbal spotlight on lavender. So like I said before, lavender is like a super common and popular herb, and that's why I wanted to start here. It's also super duper versatile. Like it has so many different uses and so many different like mundane uses, magical uses. So I wanted to talk about it. Um, so a couple of folk names that I found for lavender are elf leaf, nard, nardus, and spike. Also spike nard could be one of them. Um, it's like gender is masculine, which I found to be really interesting because for me personally, I associate lavender with the divine feminine. It's such a comforting and like soothing, gentle kind of herb. So I didn't really associate it me personally with like a masculine energy. So when like I read that in my book, and by the way, like a lot of the like magical um, information from for this comes from Scott Cunningham's um, Herbal Encyclopedia. So that's where I'm getting that information. But when I read that, I was like really like intrigued. I'm like, that's very interesting because I personally associate lavender with the divine feminine. Um, however, I do now that I'm like thinking about it and talking about it out loud, I do put lavender in my protected by self love spell, which is a spell that I it's one of the Bible based spells that you can grab from me off my Etsy shop. But I associate that spell really closely with Jesus like if you get any spell from me and you want to like connect with Jesus's energy that's the one so I guess it kind of makes it's like a gentle gentle masculine kind of energy right anyway I think that's interesting um so the planet that rules lavender is a mercury and the element that uh, lavender is ruled by is air so I want to break this episode down into like three separate mini parts. So first we're going to talk about the mundane uses for lavender. Then we're going to talk about lavender in the Bible because I didn't know this, but it actually is in the Bible and that's so cool. Um, and then the third thing we're going to talk about is magical uses for lavender. So firstly, the mundane uses for lavender. Lavender is really good for skin support. It can help clear up acne, it can soothe burns, it can brighten dark, dark spots and help soothe irritated skin. Um, so if you're going to use it for skin support, I recommend like using one drop of lavender essential oil in coconut oil or olive oil or your carrier oil of your choice and put it over, you know, wherever you need to put it. But literally like one tiny drop of a high grade lavender essential oil because you don't want to further irritate um, whatever you're trying to treat. And obviously if you're allergic to uh, lavender or have any questions about lavender, like if it's good for you or like are sensitive to the smell of lavender, do not use it for like anything, <laughs> but especially mundane, um, holistic health purposes. Um, so another thing that lavender is really good for is seasonal allergy support, especially when you combine it with a lemon and peppermint. I always have a lemon, lavender, and peppermint roller um, bottle in my bag because it is one of the only things that helps soothe me when I have like a really stuffy nose um, or like I feel an allergy attack coming on. Um, Lavender is also really good for immune system support. So taking a drop of lavender essential oil and putting that on your feet at night um, or even drinking lavender tea could be really good for your immune system. Um, lavender is also good. And I feel like this is like the most common known use for lavender. The mo most common mundane use for lavender is that it's good for sleep support and helping to calm nerves. So like I said before, making lavender tea could be really good for this, especially if you're going to do lavender tea before bedtime. And um, then you could just have like a satchel of lavender under your pillow and the scent of it will help you fall asleep or diffuse lavender essential oil. It's really up to you how you what modality you want to use the herb in. Um, and then the final mundane use that I have written down is that it can help reduce inflammation and pain. These are the calming aspects of it. It can help calm down like irritated areas. Me personally, if I have really sore muscles, I like to use a lavender magnesium cream. I get it from Earthly. I haven't bought it from them in a long time. Um, so I'm not sure if they still sell it, but 
I have this lavender magnesium cream and it's like absolutely a lifesaver. I use it all the time and I've had it forever because it lasts like so much. You only need like a tiny little penny dime size, right? Dimes are the smallest coins. You only need like a dime size to put over a huge area. Like I could put like a dime over my entire back and be like totally okay. Um, so I absolutely love that stuff and it really helps to soothe any like pain or inflammation that I'm having. Um, so I really love lavender for that. I also know that like the magnesium is helping in that situation too, but the lavender is like soothing and it also just calms me down um, because like sometimes my pain makes me really anxious because like with chronic pain, you never know if it's going to go away or when it's going to go away. So it's like a really anxiety that like not knowing it's a really anxiety provoking thing for me. And I've noticed that this cream or the smell of lavender, that's what I should say. The smell of lavender helps if I'm in like a high pain state to kind of like calm my, my nerves, calm my mind as well as like calm the pain down a bit. Now that we've talked about the mundane uses of lavender, let's talk about some examples of lavender in the Bible. And I did not know that lavender was in the Bible when I did the herbs and essential oils episode of the podcast. Um, if you didn't know, I did a whole episode about herbs and essential oils, and we talked about a couple of different ones that you can find in the Bible. Obviously, not all of the ones that you can find in the Bible, but a good chunk of them. I tried to pick, like, really common ones that I found in there. Um, but anyway, I didn't know that it was in the Bible because it's not written under as like lavender it's not called lavender in the bible it is called spike nard or nard in the bible and i did not know <laughs> that this was lavender but when i was researching for this episode i found lavender in the bible and i found a couple of examples of it so i'm going to talk about a few just different verses where spike nard or nard is mentioned in the bible which is obviously lavender and i just i just want to mention them because i feel like they're interesting and like knowing that these herbs were used during jesus's time and we're like using them now today is really cool and it just shows you how people change people evolve people advance but like the core of us remains and you know this is something that like herbalism is something like at our core like working with herbs whether it be holistically magically whatever um spiritually has always been a thing and we should continue to do it now a quick break from this week's episode of the jesus witch podcast to talk about a few ways you can help support the show one way you can help support the creation of the Jesus Witch Podcast is to become a supporter of us on Patreon. On our Patreon, there are four different tiers that you could choose from, and they're all named after tarot cards. We have the Fool, the Magician, the Hierophant, and the High Priestess. In the Fool tier, you get early ad-free episodes of the Jesus Witch Podcast, extended show note pages when available, Christian tarot grimoire pages, and access to our monthly community oracle reading. In the Hierophant tier, you get everything from the Fool tier, tarot spreads to help your connection with Christ, spirit, your higher self. I also like to put out new tarot spreads for each full moon or new moon, wheel of the year holiday, and zodiac sign. In the Magician tier, you also get one Bible-based spell grimoire page each month. This teaches you how to incorporate the Bible into your own spell practice. In the Hierophant tier, you get everything from the Fool and the Magician tiers, as well as a happy mail package from me every single month with the ingredients to make a spell, as well as an extra Bible-based spell page for your grimoire. And then you get access to our spellcasting Zoom each month where we do the spell that I sent you together. In the High Priestess tier, you get everything from the Magician, Fool, and Hierophant tiers, as well as an extra Bible-based spell from the Sun and Moon Oily Co. in your Happy Mail package each month, and a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me every single month to discuss your practice, how you're growing, and any suggestions that I could give to you to help you on your path. Patreon tiers start at $6.66 per month, and you can find the link to that in the show notes page. Another way you can help support the show is by shopping at my Etsy shop, The Sun and Moon Oily Co. Over on the Sun and Moon Oily Co., I offer Bible-based spell oils, ritual bath salts, Jesus witch or Christian witch specific mystery boxes, and custom spell oils. Over on my Etsy shop is where you can also book different types of readings with me. I offer tarot readings for your inner child, channel messages from Jesus or from Lilith. I also have a listing for general tarot readings. You could grab a soul contract reading between yourself and another person or yourself and a deity that you're working with or curious to work with. 
or even grab an astrology reading for yourself or an astrology reading for your kiddos to help you parent them better and more effectively. There's also Jesus Witch merch on my Etsy shop and so many other things that I am planning on adding to my shop. So head over to the Sun and Moon Oily Co. to check that out. Another thing you can do to support the growth of the Jesus Witch podcast is join our Discord community. The Jesus Witch Church is our free 18 plus Discord community where we host Jesus Witch Church services and moon circles. This is your place to ask all Jesus Witch or witchy questions in general and make some really awesome friends. You can find the link to our church in the show notes page. Another free way you could support the Jesus Witch podcast is by sharing this show with a friend and rating it on whatever podcasting app you're using with five stars. Leaving us a nice review really helps get the word out about the show, and don't forget to subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app. Another thing you could do to help the creation of the show is send a donation to the Jesus Witch Podcast via Cash App or PayPal. It takes a lot of time and effort for me to create the Jesus Witch Podcast, and getting donations helps me get the support and help that I need to be able to create this type of content for you. Donations also help keep this podcast free to everybody, so if you love this show and the information that's being put out there, please consider sending a donation to my PayPal or my Cash App. The username on both is the Jesus Wedge Podcast, but the link for both of those can be found in the show notes page. And the final way that you could help support the creation of the Jesus Wedge Podcast is by sending me a gift. In the show notes page, I have the link to my Amazon wish list. Everything that I put on this wish list was put there to help create content for you. Simply put, buying things off of this Amazon wish list helps me so that I don't have to purchase them myself. So I can put more of my resources in towards making the Jesus Witch Podcast. If you would like to support the Jesus Witch Podcast by buying me a gift or in any other way, you could find all the links to everything mentioned in this ad in the show notes page. Now let's get back to the show. So in biblical times, um, lavender was frequently transformed into a, a costly and exclusive perfume oil um, or a urogant. I think that's how you pronounce that word that was used to purify, heal and like create a fragrance. Um, so the first verse we're going to look at is John twelve three, which says, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. The Mary that's being referred to here is not Mother Mary. It's like Mary from Mary and Martha. And these two women were Lazarus's sisters. So in this particular Bible verse, Jesus had went to go visit them. And Martha was um, making the house really nice and making sure Jesus had like good food and was like preparing a space for him. But Mary was just taking a moment with him and, you know, washing his feet, giving him an offering of like lavender ointment um, to give a good fragrance for him. Um, so it was just like looking at the duality of like how two people receive Christ sort of thing. But I thought that it was interesting that the herb that she was using to make that fragrance was lavender, which like spike nard, but lavender, that's so cool. Um, so the next verse I want to look at is Mark 14, three, which says when he was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, and a reclining at the table, there came a woman with an alabaster vial, a very costly perfume of nard, and she broke the vial and poured it over his head. This is another incidence of a woman giving Jesus an offering of lavender, which like now that I'm reading these verses and I'm like thinking about how like in the beginning I said I use lavender, my protected by self-love, which is like one of the main oils I use to connect with Jesus like that I feel like has the most Jesus energy out of every spell that I make and like seeing how many women used lavender to like anoint Jesus with and all that like that stuff like that's like wow <laughs> like my brain is like spinning because it like feels like it was just like so in front of my face you know what I'm saying like lavender being used for Jesus and the fact that I really associate lavender with him it's just I don't know like it's mind-blowing and then this also proves that no matter how far into your deconstruction journey you are no matter how many times you've read the bible no matter how many times you've dissected the word you're always gonna find something new in it like this is something I've been reading the bible for only God knows how long now it's been too long um, and like I'm just discovering that lavender was used in the Bible and that's like making connections for my own faith so that's just like really that's really cool and really interesting 
So the last verse that we are going to look at comes from the book of Song of Solomon. This is the only one that we're going to look at that comes from the Old Testament. And this, ber this verse says, Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruit, with pleasant fruits, camophere, with spikenard, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with trees of frankincense, myrrh, and aloes, and all of the chief spices. I just thought that was a cool one because it listed a bunch of different herbs and lavender was in there, so that's why I added it. I also wanted to add something on this list that wasn't in the New Testament to show you that um, lavender was used throughout history and throughout the biblical like canon or biblical history, whatever word you want to put there. Um, so yeah, I... That's so cool. I love that lavender is in the Bible. I have a whole like blog post um, linked for our Patreon supporters in the, in the extended show notes page where it has more info about lavender being found in the Bible. So if you're interested in that, um, head over to those show notes on Patreon. Now for the last part of this episode, we are going to talk about the magical, or at least some of the magical uses for lavender, because you could absolutely la use lavender for so many different things. Like I said, it's a very versatile um, herb. These are just some of my personal favorite ways to use it, or like when I was reading the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs by Scott Cunningham, um, these were the ones that kind of popped out to me. So firstly, a couple of powers that um, lavender has, and these were listed right in the book, was love protection, sleep, longevity, happiness, and peace. So the first way you can use lavender magically is to put it in a love, a love spell, creating a self-love satchel and putting um, lavender herb in it or rubbing a piece of paper with lavender with like a love note on it, um, washing your clothes in lavender to make you appear more attractive. Um, lavender can also be used in money magic to help draw in new clients and new customers. You can also use lavender to help induce sleep. You can burn a lavender bundle or a lavender candle or diffuse lavender before bedtime to promote a deep sleep. You can also use lavender to encourage dreams by keeping some dried lavender in a satchel under your pillow, or you could just like wash your sheets with lavender, whether that be like lavender herb, that might be like a little messy in a washing machine. Me personally, if I'm gonna use lavender in like washing my sheets, I'd sometimes that's something I like to do, especially if I'm going through like a bout of insomnia like during this pregnancy I've not been able to sleep it's been really difficult so I've been trying to work with lavender during nighttime um so one of the things I'm gonna start doing is washing my bed sheets with lavender essential oil obviously put the detergent in don't be gross <laughs> put soap to wash your clothes but also put like a couple of drops or lavender or like a couple of little lavender herb flakes it doesn't even need to be a lot you know what I'm saying like you could put like literally like three or four little herbies in there not to ruin your washing machine although like over time that might ruin it I don't know don't take advice from me like when it comes to maintaining appliances I'm the girly who's broken multiple stoves um, since moving into her house and I've only listened lived here for three years but anyway um <laughs> wash your clothes with lavender um, or like even buying like lavender scented detergent if that's something you're into um, could be a way to use lavender to like make yourself more attractive or to help induce sleep by washing your sheets in lavender. My personal favorite way to use lavender is to put it in a protection spell. That's why I use it in my protected but thy self love spell. One, I feel like it helps connect me to Jesus. And obviously as we were reading through the Bible verses, no wonder why it makes me feel freaking connected to Jesus, my goodness. Um, but two, it is really, really good for protecting yourself. It's good for protecting your energy because like it chills you out and it makes you more focused on yourself. It's good for like repelling negative people's energy. I mean, it's good for like attracting love. So instead of attracting people's negativity and their like mean thoughts towards you you're attracting like the good positive energies the good positive vibes and kind of like being able to repel um people's bullshit away from you and then the final idea I'm going to give you guys is to help um, call in peace for yourself or for others during a very stressful time. The way that I would personally do this is very simple. I would take lavender. I'd make like a little like ring 
with it so that I could put a candle in the middle. Obviously, on a fire safe plate, we do these things. Um, but I put a lavender ring and then I will take a purple candle because purple is a common color, a soothing color. If I don't have purple, I'll probably use blue. If I don't have blue, when all else fails, you use white because you can substitute white for anything. And then I'll carve my name into the candle or whoever I'm sending calmness to and just light that and it's very simple very easy you could read some um like calming bible verses over the candle if you want to to call in like that Jesus energy or you can just send calming healing Christ-like energy through your purple candle and through the lavender herbs that you you'll like charge the candle with so those are all of the things that i have about lavender to tell you guys today thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the jesus witch podcast i hope that this was helpful i hope that it encourages you to use lavender or at least like encourages you to explore using more herbs in your practice um it was really cool learning about lavender in the bible like that obviously like really blew my mind i can't stop talking about that because like I don't know. I just, I always felt such Jesus-y energy from lavender. And then like now like putting two and two together as to why it's really like mind blowing for me. Um, so that, that was really cool. But anyway, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and it helps your practice. If you would like to help support the Jesus Witch podcast, please don't forget to subscribe to us on whatever podcasting platform you're currently listening to us on. Give us a rating of five stars. Follow me on social media. I have Instagram and TikTok. Both are Lena the Jesus Witch. If you would like to help financially support the show, we have a Patreon and Etsy shop. Um, you can send donations directly to the show. I also have my baby registry links. Um, all that good stuff that you could find in the show notes page. Everything that I mentioned, I should have said that. It's all in the show notes page. So now it's time for one of my favorite parts of every episode of the Jesus Witch podcast. Our verse of the day, day to day, or week, or whatever. I, I don't know. Our featured verse, highlighted verse. I don't know what to call this. Anyway, this is a verse that I shared in the Jesus Witch Church, which is our free Discord group. If you're not in there, come hang out. Like, be there, be square, people. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that was. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, this is a verse that I shared the other day in the Jesus Witch Church, and it was the verse of the day on the Bible app. And I was like, I looked at it and I'm like, holy shit, this is such a witchy verse. You could use this in a manifestation spell. It's fucking awesome. So I wanted to share it with you here because it is such a good verse and I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to be using it in manifestation spells myself. So I just wanted to share it with you so you also have that resource. Um, so the verse is Isaiah 55 11, which says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which which I sent it like tell me you can't use that verse in manifestation to try and sit here and tell me you can't use that verse in a manifestation because that's like literally like what it is it's like my words gonna come out and be fulfilled like when Christians try to say that the bible is not magical they need to be so fucking for real because like shit like that that's manifestation that's teaching you how to manifest Anyway, like mind freaking blowing. So any that's the verse of the day. Isaiah 55 verse 11. Go use it. Put it in all your manifestation spells. It's so good. I can't believe I have not come across that verse in all of my years. Again, like another thing that I recently discovered. Wow. I just, I love that about the Bible. It's like, it might be such a cliche thing to say, but every time you read the Bible, you will get something new out of it. That, that is why it's the living word. And I know that sounds so fucking evangelical to, to say, but it's so true. My goodness. It really, um... This, the Bible really just has like a story and it tells like multiple different stories and each story speaks to you in a different way through different seasons of life. And I absolutely love that about it. Um, so anyway, that was our verse of the day. Um, great verse. I'm going to be using it. Hope you use it too. Um, hope you're encouraged to do a manifestation spell now with that. Because I love it. Oh God. Anyway. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Um, I will talk to you next time. Bye.